This is a clip playing at normal speed. This is the same clip in slow motion. And this is the same clip sped up. Now what if you want to mix all of this, get different speeds for different parts of the video and create a dynamic sequence? Normally, if I was an amateur, I would add cuts to the clip and then would slow down and speed up the different portions depending upon how I want the final output to look like. But the problem with this is the speed changes are too harsh. We are going from normal speed to fast motion, slowing it down and then going fast again. All of those crazy speed changes are taking place over one frame each. And that is why it looks abrupt. So speed ramping is to smooth out these changes to manipulate the speeds over a period of time rather than just one single frame so that the video can flow nicely. Now, why would you want to do these speed changes? As editors, it's our job to make the video attractive. And a lot of the time, if not always, this means to synchronize the visuals with the beats of the track. There's this one scene from the movie Ford vs Ferrari, which I really love. Saw how they cut the clips on the drums? What if it was edited this way? Right. I'm sure it does not look good at all. Of course, there are no speed changes or ramps in this little sequence. But my point is, it's important to understand the flow of the music. And if we can match the visuals with that, it can give us a cohesive, attractive result. So let's learn how to do that. We are inside of Premiere Pro, but keep in mind that this techniques can also be applied in any of the editing softwares that you might be using. There's always one prerequisite to achieve smooth speed ramps, and that is to always shoot our videos in higher frame rates since we are dealing with slow motion in this effect. Now, if you have watched my previous tutorial, you will be able to understand this because I've explained everything right from frame rates to how slow motion works and how to create a smooth slow motion in post in that tutorial video. So I highly recommend to watch that first if you haven't already, since this video builds up on that one. All right, so I will bring this clip on the timeline. This will currently play back at normal speed. If you want to slow this down, there are two methods that we know already. One is the speed duration thing, and the other one is where we interpret the footage. But since we want to create speed ramps, we're going to learn a third method right now. So first, we will increase the height of this layer so that we can see things clearly. We will go to the small button in the top left corner which says FX. Right click on it, time remapping and speed. This white line which says 100% represents the baseline speed at which the clip is currently running at in the timeline. Since we dropped the 120 FPS clip into the timeline without making any speed changes, it is playing at normal speed at present. So this line in this case says that 100% equals the real time normal speed. Click and drag this line above, you'll see that the percentage value is rising up and it will make our clip faster. And on the flip side, if we drag it down below 100%, it will slow down our video. Keep in mind that we cannot cross a certain limit while slowing down a clip. Our video is shot at 120fps and our timeline is set to 24fps. So we cannot go past 20% because if we do that, it will result in choppy slow motion. Again, I've discussed all of this in my previous video. So if you are not understanding this, watch that video first. I've also added timestamps in the description of that video. So if you want to look up a specific topic, you can do that and then continue with this video. Now, what if I did some speed changes? Let's say we brought the clip into the timeline, maybe adjusted the speed to the slowest that we can make it, which is 20%. Now, if we go to time remapping, this white line will still display 100%. It won't show 20%. So as I said, 100% in time remapping represents the speed at which the clip is running at in the timeline. In this case, since the clip is currently playing at the slowest that it can go, 100% over here represents that. Now we should not drag this line down anymore because it will start giving choppy slow motion in this case. If we want to play it back at real time normal speed, we will have to drag it up to 500% because of the math that you are seeing on the screen currently. Anything above 500% will then speed up the clip from the normal speed and will turn it into fast motion. So to avoid this sort of confusion, one quick tip is if you are aiming to create speed ramps, just drop the clip into the timeline straight away and make the speed changes via time remapping. That way, 100% is gonna represent the normal speed and it would be easier to understand and process the things. Now what if I want to speed up this clip after this point? We will switch to the pen tool, shortcut key is P or you can grab it from this list. Click on this line to create a point or a set of keyframes. Since we want it to run at normal speed before this point, I will keep it as it is. 
and will start dragging up this portion. We surely will get the speed change, but this is really similar to the amateur method as the speed change is too harsh and abrupt. So to make it smooth, I will select this point or this keyframe and will open it up towards the right. You'll see that we have now created a ramp and the speed change from 100 to 300 occurs gradually over a period of some frames rather than one single frame. Now there is one more step to make it more smooth. Clicking on these keyframes will reveal this vertical bar. Select the top end and drag it towards the right. This creates a curve on both the ends which will make our speed change smoother. By adjusting the distance between these keyframes, we can alter the time in which the speed transition takes place. If we increase the distance between the keyframes, the speed change will take place over a longer period of time and if we do the reverse, it will make that change real quick. Play with these parameters to achieve the desired results. Now, what if I change my mind and I decide that I want my speed change to occur at this point? I can delete the keyframes that I've created by selecting them and pressing delete and create a new ramp at the new position or let me just undo this or I can have this pointer between the keyframes. After it changes into a double arrowhead, I will click and drag to adjust the position of these keyframes as per my liking. And now the speed change takes place at the new position. Now let's try to sync this up with the beats of the track that we have. So I'm gonna create a speed ramp when this tune comes up. I'll increase the speed for just a brief moment and then gonna drop it down instantly. Just want the video to have an impact, a kick cause of that tune. So let's do that. The tune starts at this point, so I will create the set of keyframes. Increase the speed of this portion. Always love it when it has some curves. And then I want the speed to drop almost instantly. So I will create another set of keyframes a little bit ahead of this one. Since we dropped the speed, this time we will have to turn the bar towards the left. Of course it is not looking good, but that is not a problem since we can customize everything even after we have created the keyframes. We can maybe drop the speed, raise it in some portions, whatever you want to match it with the beats. I'm gonna skip the part where I do the same thing to match it the second time just for the sake of this tutorial, but here is what I came up with. Looks really good I would say. So we are sorted with this clip. I want to have a new clip that will start from this point. We can let it play as it is, or we can create a transition between these two clips. There are a lot of different ways for doing that. But the thing which is special about this case is, observe the movement of the sky in both the clips. Both of these clips are moving in the same clockwise direction. This is a perfect scenario where we can use speed ramping to create a transition. We're gonna do that by ending the first clip at a very high speed. And I'm gonna start the second clip with the same intensity, with the same speed. Doing this will blend the two clockwise movements from two different clips which will improve the flow of this video. It will make the cut seamless. So I'll create another set of keyframes over here. I'm gonna ramp it up. I'll do the same with the second clip. I'm gonna try to match the speeds. And then I'll come forward a bit. I'm gonna drop this way down. After a few adjustments and addition of some sound effects, this is the final result. So that is it for now. I hope that this video was helpful and if you did learn something out of it, feel free to show your support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends and maybe subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, keep creating and I will see you in the next one.